Hello and welcome. Hope you're enjoying the festive season as we look back to one of the great events of 2012. King in the Ring saw a wide array of New Zealand's top stand-up fighters square off under international K1 rules. Let's check out King in the Ring, the ultimates, as New Zealand's top eight super heavyweights fought an elimination tournament at ASB Stadium in Kohimarama. This guy is a bulldozer with a wrecking ball attached. Look at ring around your eye and bed marks on your back. He's an animal. He's hungry. You ain't been hungry since Supreme clientele. Remember what you first told me when I took you in. You wanted to be a fighter. You wanted to be champ. the cruiserweight from South Auckland. The big fella, the barbarian, Polo Lucky. From ETK North Shore, the Jaguar, Josh Hetter. Balmoral back in the eight man, Mika Malifulu. And Hiroa, the veteran, T-Man Tirangi. Thomas Viato from Rotorua. And the fire plug slugger, Tapa. Dumper, Missy Party, another cruiserweight stepping up, the South Four, Nato Lauli. And welcome to ASB Stadium in Koi Marama, Auckland. Tonight, the big boys come out to play. It's the super heavyweight king in the ring. Eight men enter, but only one man can go out victorious. Three fights for the winner in a single night. Three different opponents, and these boys are all big boys. I'm Lightning Mike Kango, and with me, the legend, John the Rebel Conway. And Rebel, tonight, an eight-man contest. It's not a contest for the faint-hearted. Now, these are big boys. Um, they all hit hard, and um, all good leg kickers, too, so it's going to be a, a great night of fights. And there's no preparation for an opponent in this event. The draw is made in the ring on the night. These guys will be facing up against other, each other for the first of the quarterfinals. Now let's head to the promoter, former six-time world champion, Jason Psycho Sutty. Jason Psycho Sutty, you've stepped out of the ring these days and now promoting the King in the Ring tournament. We're here at the fourth one. How are you feeling about tonight? Um, I'm excited. It's looking good. I'm so excited that I asked my wife if I could fight again. And she said, uh, what did I have on her day? So oh, I'm happy being the promoter. And how do you find the tournaments have grown uh, as they've gone along? Uh, they're, they're the show to be on. Um, the fighters asked me to be on the show. Um, there's eight fighters tonight, but we had um, we had eight replacements if they pulled out. Um, the show's coming along really well, good for the public, and um, the fighters, thanks to the fighters, it's been really awesome. First time on Sky Sport this year, getting a little uh, more exposure out there. How do you think that'll help the sport? Oh, it's, it's awesome for the sport. I'm really happy for the fighters as well. They're going to get some recognition for um, for doing hard work at home. And any uh, any inside tips for who, who to look out for tonight? Uh, oh, oh man, it's so undecidable because there's eight all quiet, like gentle, gentle giants. So, um, and then I know they're going to fight hard because the quiet ones you've got to look out for. Hopefully not uh, too gentle tonight. What can the public expect if this is the first time they're watching? They're going to expect eight guys, um, some, some better skilled, more fit than the others, but you're going to see them fighting their guts out with, um, with hearts and uh, everyone's going to appreciate it, I'm sure. Up the draw, we head into quarterfinal number one, Holy Lucky versus Thomas Piato. The second bout, Nato Lauli versus Josh Hetter. 
And in the quarterfinal number three, Mika Malefulu versus the veteran Hiroa Tarangi. And finally, quarterfinal number four, Tafa Missy Party against Henry Tane. Whoa. And let's head straight into quarterfinal number one, the barbarian Paolo Laki against Thomas Piato. A very, very brave showing from the boy from Rotorua up against a mountain of a man. Well, word around town says that Paolo's a, uh, the favourite in the show. He's a big boy. He's the bigger one in the, in the group. And here he is now, just throwing headshot after headshot. Well, Piato, I think his courage and fatigue got the better of him. Polo, after initially being rocked in that first round, just proved too much, too strong for a brave showing from the former cruiserweight from Rotorua. But in the end, just look at that mountain of a man. Knees, uppercuts, left hook in particular really did the damage. And just too much, despite a brave showing, Polo Laki going through to the semi-final. This one is a rematch. Nato Lauli, Josh the Jaguar Heta. Lauli had a lot to prove, having lost in the heavyweight king in the ring last year. The Southpaw, his rear hand coming from the back, and Josh Heta coming on strong in this third and final round after Lauli took the first two. Nato's put a bit of weight on him for this fight. He's usually a little bit lighter, and he's a very slick fighter. There's one of those front kicks I was talking about. But Nato's getting backed up. He's on the rope. Well, very much here, Josh Hitter. We haven't really seen him set his hands, set his feet and throw bombs with mean intentions, but he's certainly doing it in this fight. It seems the king in the ring brings the best out in these boys. And they are big shots. Both of these boys over 100 kilos. And those shots taken clean on the chin. Not a lot of defense. And Heta really needs this third and final round. It's been a very close fight. Lauli has probably shaded the first couple. Oh, and a leg kick to right home about another left front kick going high. But Heta certainly dominating this third and final round. One thing about Josh, he's never been in a bad fight. He's always come out with a lot of action, a lot of punches, and he fights with his heart. Both boys exhausted, and this pays a lot in that second fight. If you've had a hard first fight, there's injuries, there's damage up top, there's damage to the shins, it's really hard to come back. Josh Hitter coming on strong, certainly edged that third and final round. And well, sweet revenge for Nato Lauli. They're one apiece. So Nato, uh, you've had your first quarterfinal fight, you came out with a split decision. How do you feel the fight went for you? Uh, I, I... I'm glad that it went the way it did. Um, basically, our, our main goal was for me to just listen, listen to my cornerman, and just sort of pace myself. Um, it was more so trying to overcome the, I guess, the, um, the thought of payback. I, uh, I lost in the semi-finals to Josh last year. So for me, it was, yeah, it was a bit of payback. And how do you balance that uh, between, you know, obviously you've got to make sure you win the fight, but you've got to keep yourself fresh for hopefully two more fights. Uh, how do you balance that in the ring? Oh, I don't think you can. I don't think you can balance it because um, the eight man is anyone's game. You could try and pace yourself for the first fight and lose, and then you're out. So there's no, uh, uh, I'd like to know if there is a balancing act, but for me, it's just uh, for what we trained was just that first fight is the last fight and everything else after that is a bonus. Bonus territory now as we head into the third quarter final. Mika Malefulu versus the veteran Hiroa Tarangi out in the old style karate gi pants. Mika certainly landing good shots, changing angles well. Yeah, Mr. T in the long pants, he's been around for as many years as I can remember. Um, he's been in some great fights in boxing, kickboxing, and MMA. Over 100 fights. Well, been in the ring with him twice, and he is one tough man. But Mika Malefulu just picking his shots better, landing the cleaner shots. Hit a renowned for a granite chin. But Malefulu just needs to be cautious here, just making sure he scores the points, doesn't overexert himself, trying to get the man out of there. Nice little uppercut on the inside. Hit Tarangi now starting to gas out that 46-year-old uh, frame. 
just starting to wear out a little more, but one thing you can never question with Karangi is his heart as he keeps on coming forward despite taking big shots from Malifu, the slugger from Balmoral Liga. Got a lot of kicks in this fight, Mike. So, um, both have got good boxing backgrounds, probably reserving their legs for later fights. Just a little bit too much in terms of the versatility there from Malifulu. Stepping over with the two. Big, big power shots there. Tarangi, his ability to absorb punishment is absolutely legendary. Malifulu just continuing to walk forward. Pretty clear how this fight is going to go on the judges' scorecards. Tarangi just so accustomed to taking shots. Nothing really phased him. He's been hit by some of the biggest punches in world kickboxing. And uh, maybe it's a tactic to tire Malifulu out by blocking those punches with his head. Well, pretty clear who the victor will be. Malifulu into the semi-final. Mika. Tough uh, quarterfinal first up. How are you feeling after that, looking ahead to your semi-final? Uh, feeling pretty good. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the next round. So, yeah, I'm pretty charged up already, ready to go. Body's feeling all right? Do you feel like you've got enough left in the tank to uh, for, for the rest of the evening? Uh, I've got plenty. Plenty of gas. Enough to go down to Wellington and back. <laughs> oh, Malifulu looking forward, and he will fight the winner of these two. Henry Tane, the taller of the two, the cruiserweight who's come up against the thumper, tougher, Misipati. The fireplug South Auckland slugger who has a little bit more skill and versatility than he might look when you first look at his frame. Tane, though, is a dark horse in this tournament. He can throw punches off either hand. He's a useful kicker. Very, very strong. Oh, that hurt, Mike. That was right in the stomach. Well, I don't think Misipati's picked up on that, but if he went straight to the body there, tries again to go with the spinning back kick. But Tane really hurt there. Now, if uh, Missy Party went downstairs with the, the liver body shot, I think he might make effect. Jason Suddy in his corner screaming at him to go to the body. This is a battle of two great South Auckland gyms. Well, it's the definition of South Auckland slugging. Nice versatility there. Good work from Missy Party, second phasing off the low leg kick. In return, eight. The taller of the two, the lighter of the two. Mr. Party's superior experience. Remembering this is Henry Tane's first fight as a professional against a seasoned pro as we go down to the judges' scorecards. And Mr. Party, the favourite, through to the semi final. Well, let's go ringside to speak to a couple of warriors of a different kind. Good to see you, gentlemen. How's your night going so far? Yeah, pretty good. Uh, first time, so. Uh, not too sure what to expect, but it's been good. Yeah, really enjoying it, eh? Um, especially being uh, right, you know, ringside. Um, it almost feels like you're, you're in there and, and feeling the hits too. And, um, oh man, there's some massive hits in there. And uh, yourself, do you see yourself doing any kickboxing in the future after the league? Nah, not really. Not against these big fellas anyway. Yeah, oh, yeah. let them do it. Love another fighter, man. <laughs> And just wondering, so far you've watched the quarterfinals. Highlight of the night? Uh, probably the first fight. Um, the bro that lost, uh, yeah, massive. But um, yeah, anyone's fight from here on in. Yeah, man, same. Um, it was the first fight. Um, the bro that went down, oh man, he put in a massive effort. And, um, but then again, you know, the, the, guy, the, the one that, that won it, um, he deserved it in the end. He was good. And um, I'd say I'll, I'll pick him to win. Yeah. Whoa. Earlier in the night, we had a bit of old school kickboxing from Lightning Mike, who's right next to me now. Um, Mike, this fight's for a charity. The, both persons go to charity. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, it was a comeback fight. Uh, I'm 41 now, and uh, this fight was to raise money for cancer cause. A little bit slower than the, than the heavyweight boys. Um, as, uh, Used to be known as lightning, more like light bulb these days, but it was, it was great to get in there and uh, just really raise some money for Cancer Society. And, and of course, uh, this 
going on while some of the boys are nursing those bruises back on the inside. It, it's pretty hard once the adrenaline goes from that first fight, particularly some of those fights, pretty hard. Coming back in then for the second and semi-final, what will be going through their minds, do you think, Rebel? Well, recovery at the moment for those big boys. Um, a few of them have got bruises. Wasn't, wasn't a lot of kicks in those fights, so uh, maybe the bruises might not be a lot, but um, they certainly took a lot of headshots in those fights. A little bit more technical in this bout than the, the previous bout. The heavyweights really tending to throw bombs. Bit of Claret coming from a heat clash there. What's it like getting back into the ring, Mike, after a few years out? Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good experience. I think it was more about getting in than it, than it was about the, the intent to hurt the opponent. But we've seen plenty of hurt in this hurt game tonight as we start to head towards, and the crowd is primed for this semi-final. And after a brutal set of quarterfinals, the Barbarian is back. Holy Laki versus Nato Lauri in semi-final number one. And semi-final two, Mika Malefulu versus the favorite Tapa Dumpa Missipati. And coming out, our first semi-final, it's Polo, the Barbarian Laki. He's up against the serious southpaw from Wellington, Nato Lauli. He's put on weight, come up to super heavyweight, but he has a mountain of a man in front of him. Rebel, as we're looking into these two boys, what can we expect? We've got the big guy, 120 kilos plus, and he's the former cruiserweight, but he is a southpaw, and that can provide difficulty. Well, Nato wants to um, hit and move, hit and move. He doesn't want to stay in front of the big boy, who I think is a favorite and um, trade with him. Let's see how this fight pans out. Don't forget, Paulie took a bit of punishment in that first fight. Well, Laoli coming off a tough fight with Josh Hitter also. He do well to move around. Nice little sharp, straight left, catching Lucky. Just on the end of the punch. Step over left hand. You notice this rear hand coming from the south court. Got to be cautious, see how Nato is circling to his left, which he can walk into either a right kick, which we saw Lucky throw just there. And that's really what you do have to throw. And they're going to town in there, just throwing bombs with no abandon. The and the big boy down. is down. The big boy is down. Not only can he capitalize, it looks like the ship has been upset. Claret flowing from the nose of the barbarian. This could be an upset. Nato's back in, he wants to finish this fight off. Little bit of uh, a rush of blood to the head there. You don't want to rush it, Mike, you want to take your time. Needs to pick his shots against the big fella. And again, he, he's just got so rushed, he's coming in and he's almost falling over his own feet as Paulie's head clears. Nice little sharp right hand there from the Barbarian. Lowley now needs to get back on his wheels, pick his shots. He knows he can hurt him now. You notice that in this fight, it's a bit more serious, so the boys are going to be using their legs a bit more. Yeah, a lot of uh, punches thrown in the quarterfinals. Lowley now moving to his right, which is the traditional southpaw shot. As soon as you stop, it's when the right leg comes up from Larkin. And he's got a nice kick. Yeah, he's quite nimble for a big fella. No problem getting that head up high. And he is a big fella. Eats a half right hook for his troubles from Lowley. But Lowley, notice how he's cornering himself up against the ropes. You do not want to be there against this big guy. And again, backing himself into the corner. That's a little bit better. Chopping and changing his angles as the Barbarian stalks. Nice uppercut right hook. Good work from Lowley. Changing angles. And <laughs> now you can see. The Barbarian drops the hammer. You can see the sheer weight. And you've got to remember, like, oh, he's a big man. Six foot four, six foot three and 100 kilos. Now the Barbarian coming on strong. And Nato is really just a cruiserweight, a blown up cruiserweight. He's doing great. Just needs to keep on popping stuff out, changing the angle. See how he's just staying stationary there. He needs to move. Throw shots and move. Marky, you notice he's just stepping in. He's waiting for his chance to throw. If Nato stayed on his bike, just peppered him with light shots. Pick the shots. He's got this fight in the bag. Quick reminder there that uh, 
Lackey can really throw shots up high as we go to the towels at the end of an exciting first round. Well, here it comes. They just threw with gay abandon. It was the kitchen sink, the house, and a Mack truck from both boys. And the left hook from the southpaw did the damage. Lucky going down, but he couldn't capitalize. He found his feet again and just continued to stalk at the end of the latter part of that first round of this, our first semi final in King of the Ring. Hey, drink, hey, Bree. Can I just say something? Hey, when you catch him, don't go stupid. Come in smart. Great it's advice there from uh, NATO's corner. Similar instructions from the legend Psycho Sadi. You're an eight count for fine. You must knock him out. The Oli's corner Lance Sarang telling him, don't go crazy if you get a wobble. Anything can happen. These are big boys and big shots. Nato just keeping his distance, using the ring. I'd just like to see him whack the inside of that thigh a little more. Oh, and there's a Big right head kick, catching Oli on the neck, and he's gone down. The big fella, Larky, showing his flexibility. Well, this fight is very much on an even keel, if Oli can get back up. That's right, Mike, there's a knockdown each now. Oh, there's some big Polynesian tree trunks really whopping down there. Now, what can La Larky do? Can he finish the cruiserweight? Can he put him out? Now he's got him in trouble, and again going with the head kick. Nice left hook. I'd like to see him throw a little bit more of that. Lucky, he throws it well. Good second phase. Needs to drop down, throw those kicks lower. Big knee up top there. Nato just trying to find his feet, find his rhythm. It's pretty hard when you've got such a huge man pounding away on you. Shot after shot after shot. The sledgehammer, big right knee coming up. How much longer can the southpaw from Wellington take it? Laaki pounding on him. All over him like a fat kid on a cupcake. The blood may be flying, but Lauli isn't trying anything back at this point. It's pure instinct and survival just keeping him up. And the sledgehammer, the power jack just keeps on pumping from the boy from ETK. At this stage, we start to think about Malaki. He hasn't been able to get his man out of there. Is he going to punch himself out? Nice high kick once again. I'd like to see him use more of that left hook. It's a really good punch for him. He's dropping his right hand, though, as well. Lowly being a southpaw, can't throw that left hand. Digs to the body, Malaki. I'd like to see him throw more body punches. Oh, the left knee high off the right hand. Can Lauli get up? Can he survive this second round? He's been pummeled from corner to corner. He has taken a lot of punishment. And the referee calling that one off. Lauli could not get up. And Pauli, the barbarian, Loak, through to the finals of the King of the Ring. And he's had two hard fights to get there, too, Mike. Well, what a battle. He took punishment throughout both fights, but there was the kick that changed the course of the match. A lovely right head kick right on the neck, cutting off the blood flow supply to the brain. Noli really did pretty well to get up from that. Let some big shin pummeling down. Nice work there again. Front kick, left knee, and that was the coup de grace. Just exhaustion, too much taking so much from that big man. With 28 seconds left in round number two, your winner going on to the finals. Winner by knockout, Barry Blue Corner, Oh, well, you've got to remember this guy came in tonight. He's only had seven fights. So, Paolo, two down, one left. How are you feeling? I oh, feel good. feel like I have to start. <laughs> That was a pretty, uh, another pretty rough encounter. Uh, you, you went down, then you came back and, uh, uh, and took him down. Uh, is that uh, going to continue in the final? Whatever happened, it will happen. Be, there's always even surprise. 
Now, is this, this is a night off work for you. Is this, is this easier than a night at work? Or? Oh, definitely, definitely, <laughs> definitely. It's like a fun night out. <laughs> yeah. Well, Molly Larky having plenty of fun, and he is into the final. Later on this evening, we have a cruiserweight band, Paddy Arfoa, another ETK fighter, going up against Jamie E. Former Kyokushin fighter from Wellington, now training out of ETK North Shore. Got a special place in my heart for the cruiserweights. And now let's go ringside to one of the rugby heavyweights of world sport. Joan Lomu with me here, so you're a big fan of this sort of thing? Yeah, no, definitely. It's, um, oh, I guess it's something that you, uh, I've grown up watching and, and so forth, but got quite a few friends who fight in this, these sort of tournaments. So, um, no, no, real huge interest in it. Is it something you've tried yourself or do you stick to the boxing? Uh, no, no, I actually do a lot of the training stuff with these guys, um, with a lot of guys, and, um, but, yeah, no, no, leave that to the pros, man. Not going to step in if someone gets injured, first alternate? No, no, I'll leave that to you. <laughs> and what is it about the, the king in the ring that makes it special for you? Um, I guess it's, well, anything associated with Jason Suddy, man, you know? Uh, the man speaks, you know, volumes, um, you know? His motto is, uh, die fighting, and, um, you know? He's, uh, he's just put on a great show, and um, you know this is, you know, I think it's one of many that's gonna that's gonna come around. But um, you know he's you know, he's he's putting back, you know, uh, into the community through through his fight fight club and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's fantastic that he's put this uh, this show on. Wonderful, thanks, Heath Jonah. Enjoy your night. Yeah, great fan of fight sports, Jonah Lomo, as we head into semi-final number two, and this is a rematch. Three times these guys have fought Tapa, Tapa, Missy Party, one of the favourites for the night, up against Mika Malefulu. Very confident, Missy Party. What can we expect from these guys? They've been in the ring, they've had a slugfest in both their previous, previous two bouts. Rebel. Well, they, they know each other well, and they both throw really good punches. Um, they're both from very well-respected gyms that do specialise in the hand department. So, um, no doubt we're going to see a lot of exchanges of um, the big bombs. And yeah, traditionally both fighters there. As you see Malipulu climbing into the ring in the red corner. The legend from Balmoral Liga, Lolo Heimuli, in his corner. And the crowd is primed. No love lost between these two. They know each other well. Just like uh, stepping into the ring with an old friend. And it's really good to see Balmoral League uh, back into the scene that uh, really dominated the sport in the 90s. Malipulu, of course, has been fighting MMA. Doubling up on his jab. Tupper using his range well. Notice he keeps his jab low and at the chest. Malipulu keeping his right hand down. That could be dangerous against the hooker. Like... Missy Party, Missy Party got a good overhand right, but he also strings on the hook well. Notice with his jab, he throws it low into the chest. Takes a right hand over the top. Or a left hook, rather. Malipulu. That right hand low is a real problem. You don't want to see the left hook coming over the top of that. Missy Party may fake the jab or fake the right hand, come with the left hook. Nice little straight right hand from Malipulu. Not a lot of leg kicking at this point. Just range, I think, something that Malipulu needs to work on. Checks for the first time. Missy Party, second phasing well off his low kicks. Uh, tougher in the red gloves. He's, he's a very explosive fighter. I like, I like how he's, um, he's popping in, he does the damage, and he pops back out again. Mick is, Mick is trying to use his slight reach advantage he has but he is covering up quite nice for Tupper's counters. He's very aware of the overhand right, but I'm a bit concerned that his right hand is down. That's a little slap right hand. And we saw that used yeah. to good effect against in his quarter-final bout against Henry Tane. Nice right hand, left hook. Oh, left hook. It was a slapping left hook, but Mali Fulu is feeling it. The cobwebs are there. He's trying to shake them off. Yeah, you won't have to tell Tupper what to do from here on in. Well, he can he knows He's how to finish a fight. He's a finisher. Ah, oh, big right hand left hook. Missy Party, no mercy. Molly Fulu didn't have a chance to set his legs to find his ground again. Can he get up? 
The whole world is shaking. Balmoral only guards and Mulohaim only throws in the towel. And Missy Party, an easy first round victory. And now into the kick in the ring. Super heavyweight final against his gym mate, Polo Laki. A huge bout coming up. Well, when he got him in trouble, Rebel, he certainly knew how to finish him. Missy Party, it all started with that left hook. Well, you picked up on it earlier, Mike, that he. Um that he kept his right hand low, which invited Tuffer and throwing a left hook. And there it is, right on the uh, jaw bone, below the ear. Did well to come back from the first knockdown. Um, did well to get up, but the referee caught it off in uh, safety first, I guess. Well, the towel wisely thrown, and he just couldn't regain his composure. And one thing Tuffer, Mr. Putty, knows how to do is punch hard and finish off. He smelt blood, and Mika Malefulu, his warrior spirit, got him up. But in some ways, he might have been better to cover up and weather the storm a little longer rather than just continue to throw bombs. And Missy Party now through to the final. Standing here with the winner of the second semi-final, Tafa Musipati, and that was an amazing knockout. How do you feel after that? Oh, I feel really good. I feel that I uh, got my hard punches in that back now, so I'm just going to go full force in the next last round. So I'm just going to die fighting all the way. What is the game plan going into the final, going up against bowling? Oh, I'm just going to go and try and knock out. <laughs> it's fresh 30 seconds now. <laughs> And just lastly, if you're going to win tonight, what does this mean to you and all your supporters and all your family and friends? Uh, it's going to make my... Uh, it's my mum's first time here. Um, she's never been to any of my fights. She never wants to watch me fight. But I got uh, my whole family here to come support me for, for my fight. And, uh, yeah, I'm just doing it for my family and my kids and Jason Brooklyn. I love them so much. They're not here at the moment. But, yeah, they make me live here today and to fight all the way. The crowd is primed for what promises to be an explosive final matchup between Missy Pati and Lucky. And now it's the turn of the cruiserweights. Paddy Afoa, the boy from ETK, challenging the champion, the cruiserweight amateur champion, Jamie Eads, for his cruiserweight New Zealand title. Privileged to have the promoter in a very experienced corner man and Jason Sutty, six-time world champion in his corner, Arboa. And the crowd well lubricated. They've been treated to a fantastic night of power punching and brutal knockouts. Well, this is a five-round fight. It's going to be fought slightly different as the heavyweights because it's, um, we've only got the one fight tonight. So there's going to be a lot more knees and a lot more kicks. And here's a man who knows how to kick. Very, very well respected Jokishin fighter, the current New Zealand champion, Jamie Eads. And you'll see the Jokishin logo on his shirt as he comes out. He fights out of ETK North Shore. His trainer, Greg Nesbitt. Keep an eye out for those withering leg kicks and the big knees. This very talented up and coming former Kyokushin champion. He comes with a good reputation, he kicks hard and he kicks a lot. Light advantage to ease. As the referee issues instructions. Very experienced referee. Taking control. This is not full tie rules. No spinning back fists, no elbows, modified tie rules. There are knees to the head, but no elbows, no spinning techniques. Rebel, what can we look out for from our follow-up as he goes up against the Kyokushin fighter? Well, the um, Jason student is a um, very accomplished fighter. He's tough as nails. He's a good puncher. You see straight away, that's a three-kick round, round-kick combination. Nice, straight right to the body there. Followed up with a front kick to the hip. Afoa throwing his first kick in anger. He's just got plenty of time to throw his shots. 
I uh, do well to throw a left hook there. Eads right hand slightly low when he, particularly when he digs down to come to the body with the right body rip. Checks well, cross checks. Some nice body shots there, Mike. And he's got to watch out for the left hook or the left head kick coming up off that body shot. Afar really needs to, and there's that left body kick clattering into the ribs. Left rip from Afar, but he needs to get busy. He cannot afford to let Eads get set and just kick away in front of him. Afar's right hand a little down as well. I tell you, Mike, when the, when the blue gloves land, you can hear them um, around the stadium. He's a, he's a solid puncher and actually pretty tidy for a guy from the Kyokyo Shin background. Good work from Greg Nesbitt. Nice jab, low kick. Comes back with an uppercut of his own. Afar starting to shed a little bit of claret from the nose. Left top, and that's a nice right hand left body rip. Yeah, I think great. that kick really hurt him, and another knee to the ribs there. Afar trying not to show it, but he is in pain. The referee starting to look closely, doubling up on the knees, the right hand. Knees going high, and referee stepping in. Afar down, he's dazed, he's hurt. Can he get up? It's that's just the first round. That's from the um, first rip kick in about 20 seconds prior to that knockdown. That was a beautifully placed kick. He, he's hurt. Really having a sense of, uh, well, That's literally saved, by, saved the by the bell. He really had a sense of when he had his man in trouble. Big right knee, but that was set up earlier by a withering left kick to the ribs. Oh, Arpaio needs to get in there and start to pay effect with those bombs of his. He's known as a puncher, and now he needs to put it to work. He, though, good defense. They've both come out fast. Nice straight right to the body again from E. He's weathering the storm well. Good defense off the boxing. Hands up nice and high. Afar needs to get going forward, not get walked backwards. Two vicious knees there in the Thai style clinch. Afar now takes the hands down around the ribs to nullify the ability to get distance and throw the knees. Now he's boxing. Oh, Bate's in all sorts of trouble, Mike. He's um he's getting out punched, he's getting out kicked. And I'm certain the, the pain from that shot earlier on in the first round hasn't gone away yet. He again not going crazy, taking his time on the way in. Good variety of shots, and notice he's picking his shots well. Back to the body, just spirit keeping our fire up at this point. Nice body shot, ripping away. Like to see E coming up. Stairs with a left hook off that body shot. You notice our forward's right hand is low. Another right knee to the ribs. Right hand over the top. Nothing coming back from our fire. He is in deep trouble. E just walking through him cutting him apart like a hot knife through butter. He can't last much longer. He just whopping his man down. Paddy Arfoa barely standing against the barrage of knees. The left knee up high, another rib kick. And the referee must be watching very closely at this point. Turned over by the right hand. Arfoa taking the knee. I'm not sure how much more punishment he can take. He's just simply not in this fight. He hasn't recovered from the body shots earlier in the round. Jason Sutty imploring his man to get up. Uh, the fight's over, Mike, and that, I mean, he did as good as he could do. I mean, he took a lot of punishment, a lot of shots, but I think it was that first kick in the first round to the ribs that probably caused that knockdown, and then the, the knockout. Well, Jamie E had a sense he had his man in trouble, and he was just merciless. He changed up his angles with different knees. That knee to the body there from Arfoa. Didn't stop through the head kick. Nice right hand over the top. And Paddy Arfoa finally went down after sustaining a brutal assault from the defending New Zealand Cruiserweight champion. Well, he won it just three months ago, and now he's defended his title, Jamie Eads, the Kyokushin Ted.
on Teddy Afar. Take a few deep breaths. Stoppage. Afar really had no answer at that point. He had a puncher's chance, or was considered a puncher's chance coming into this fight. But Jamie E proves his class and defends his New Zealand amateur cruiserweight title. Jamie E, WKBF cruiserweight champion of New Zealand. How does it feel to defend the belt? Oh, awesome. Yeah, yeah really awesome, eh? Um, you know, a lot of people say you're not a champion until you've defended your belt. You know, winning it is one. But anybody can have one good day or one good fight or fight someone who's having a bad fight. But to win it and then to defend it, I think it sort of it puts me up the top. It's happy, really happy. Dominating display out there. Uh, it's the cruiserweights are going to have their turn at King in the Ring next time. Are you looking forward to that? Think you'll be uh, in good position to take out that title as well? Can't wait. This, you know, this is warm up for it. I mean, obviously this is a huge fight for me. First time we've been on Sky, but. Yeah, man, King of the Ring, three three fights in one night, it's a big task. Um, I'm from a Kukshin karate background, and so a lot of our fights are tournament style. So it won't be my first time fighting in a tournament, but it'll be the first time in a kickboxing tournament, which will be pretty difficult. So we're going to have to train hard for it and get the fitness up, get the cardio going. As a New Zealand champion, you'll have a target on your back, though. How do you how do you prepare and, uh, with that situation? It doesn't bother me in the slightest. You know, everybody's got to go in to win, and it's luck of the draw through the pick of the hat. So nobody can prepare specifically for me, same as I can't prepare specifically for any of the other seven guys that'll be in the tournament. So really makes no difference. The best thing is, is it gives me confidence that yep, I've got the title for this weight grade and these set of rules. So yeah, it's going to give me confidence to go in and just do my thing. Well, a future world champion, perhaps, in Jamie Eads. And now the time for talk is over. And then super heavyweight, absolute killer bout, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the blue corner. Would you please put your hands together? Here comes Paolo, the barbarian. And oh, can you feel the thunder? The barbarian is in the house, making his way ringside. This huge man, Paolo Laki. Two fights, two knockouts, but he's taken a lot of punishment, Rebel, coming into this bout against his gym mate, Tapa Missipati. He definitely has, Mikey, his damaged goods, but um, I picked him as the favourite, and I still pick him as the favourite. He's just too big and too strong. Head high kicks, powerful. Bit of a package, this young man. Well, he's certainly only had nine fights in his career, if you include the two tonight. Going up against a much more seasoned opponent than Tapa Missipati. He's been in the ring before, he's been in an eight-man contest before, and that big frame you have to lug around, the lactic acid, saw him backstage earlier. And he's all iced up, and he's going up against corner, his gym mate. Would you please put your hands together for Tafa, the Thumper! He is very much a South Auckland slugger. A Samoan fire plug. Tapa Missipati. The overhand right, the left hook, the occasional leg kick. But composure too. And remember, he's coming off Rebel. A second round knockout, a demolition of Mika Malepolo. In fact, that was in the first round. So he hasn't sustained the same damage that Larky has. That's right, he hasn't taken the, pu the punishment and he's fresh. And they say one thing in boxing, you never count out a slugger. Well, both these boys carry sledgehammers in either hand. Lucky probably has more versatility with the high knees, which will be a real, da real danger to a small fighter like Missy Patti. Jason Suddy sharing final words with his gym brothers. Two boys he trains, what an unenviable position he's chosen to sit out the corner for both these fighters. Showing no favouritism. And the crowd is primed. The celebrities are sitting on the edge of their seats as we head into the final of this King in the Ring eight-man contest. Fighting out of the blue corner, this 32-year-old weighted at 117.4 kgs. He stands at six feet, five inches tall. He hails from Auckland, New Zealand, representing ET. 
BTK in Auckland. He's an undefeated fighter with nine straight wins on his record. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Parlo, the Barbarian McCall! Well, Rebel, this is his 10th fight of his career and a big ask against his gym and mate. Crowd favourite too, Rebel. A lot of support here for him tonight. Oh, he's got a big fan base. Well, he's been around for a long time. He's um he's always in good fights. But Larky want, he'd want to keep his distance early in the fight because uh, tough as a puncher, um, they probably punch as hard as each other. But um, Larky would have the better kicks, I'd imagine, than the high you know, the high kicks. I think Larky would do well to lean over, throw his right hand, lean over, and throw the knee to the body. Just lean over on the top of Mr. Party, taking away those big looping shots. Defense is probably the thing that Larky lacks at this point. He's been able to get away with more offense. He's definitely probably the more able athlete. Well, he's got his hands up there nice now, Mike, and there goes one of those high kicks. He looks fatigued, but again, notice he's got his hands up, but notice he's uh, he's just a little sluggish or looking a little sluggish. And Missy Party. Almost inevitably working his way forward, overhand right. Throws the nice left hook off his overhand right. And that's the that's the right tactics for Larky. Throwing the knee, putting the hand over the top. But again, he's not setting up. He's not discouraging Mr. Putty from coming in. And he's a patient boy, Mr. Putty. Tip low. Oh, that's an overhand right from hell. No need to count there. No need to count, Clyde like Kelly. Call it off straight away. The eyes roll back in his head. The barbarian has been full. The tree has been chopped down. Missy Party is champion. Missy Party is champion. Well, Mike, that right punch, overhand right punch, came out of nowhere. It was a, like a left jab to the body, right hand over the top. Beautiful right. combo. Set it up beautifully, Missy Party. Rightfully showed a lot of concern from his gym brother. He took a lot of punishment as we return to the replay and see Rebel. Oh, there was no question, was there, as soon as he threw it. He, he winded up. That was a beautiful punch. Hands are down. Right through the middle. Didn't even need the left hook follow-up. No. Yeah, probably lucky. Well, we'll see a lot more of him. For Mr. Pati's mum, congratulating both boys, these brothers stepping in the ring. And in many ways, the more experienced fighter, the hardened fighter, held sway. He had a slightly easier path to the final, but let's take nothing away from either fighter. But tonight, it is tougher. Missy Party, the 2012 super heavyweight king in the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, with two minutes and nine seconds left in the very first round, your winner by knockout, on the end of the red corner, Tofu, the Thumper, Missy Party! Well, great camaraderie there. Great night of fights. All those fights could have been main events, good matches. Great, great crowd, a large number. It's really hard to top that. There we see what it's all about. Tapa, congratulations, super heavyweight, king in the ring. How do you feel? I feel awesome. I feel pretty good. And have to go back to work on Monday with no bruises. Yeah. Three fights in a night. Uh, pretty tough. How do you, how's the body feeling? Oh, the body feels pretty good. No sores, no nothing. So pretty awesome. My little nickels here and there, but. 
Awesome. Tough going against a good friend and training partner. Uh, how do you? How do you? How is it going into a fight like that? Um, well, we just had to. Um, outside of the ring, we're friends, but inside of the ring, we're here to do a job. We have to fight to be the king of the ring. And yeah. Anyone you want to thank? I'd like to thank my mum and dad, especially uh, my sons, Andreas in Brooklyn. I'd like to thank Anna, Sadi, and Jason Sadi. I'd like to thank all my family and friends. And I'd like to thank all the sponsors too. Congratulations, Safi, the king in the ring. Cheers, thank you. Missy Party takes home some bling to keep up his jeans and a check so he can buy some more sneakers. And a lot of emotion now. The adrenaline is gone, but the emotion still stays. These gym brothers fought it out. Jason Suddy must be very happy. He's gone from being a champion in his own right to producing champions. Oh, he's got to be happy. I mean, um, it's kind of sad to see your, your two brothers fight each other, but you know, he's got to be happy to have the two best heavy, super heavyweights you know, in, in New Zealand. Paulo Laki and a tougher thumper, Misupati. The ETK Brotherhood standing strong, and there's what it was all about. A nice check to take home. And certainly these King in the Ring events have become the best stand-up event in New Zealand combat sports. Jason Psycho Sadi, now super promoter, the crowd is going away very happy. Every fight on the night tonight, Rebels, something that you could could have put on as a main event on many smaller cards. Oh, it was a, it was a great night of matchups. Um, everybody pulled their hearts out. I mean, that's all you can ask from fighters. But um, when's the next one coming up? That's what I want to know. A different weight division, maybe? Well, certainly something to look forward to. It's been a superb show. And there we have it, Jason Psycho Sunny and the 2012 King in the Ring. Tougher, tougher, Missy Party. Well, the crowd's going away wanting more, but a night of wonderful KOs has come to an end. I'm Mike Hangove here with John the Rebel Conway saying good night from ASB Stadium. Hello and welcome. Hope you're enjoying the festive season as we look back to one of the great events of 2012. King in the Ring saw a wide array of New Zealand's top stand-up fighters square off under international K. Hello and welcome. Hope you're enjoying the festive season as we look back to one of the great events of 2012. King in the Ring saw a wide array of New Zealand's top stand-up fighters square off under international K1 rules. Let's check out King in the Ring, the Ultimates, as New Zealand's top eight super heavyweights fought an elimination tournament at ASB Stadium in Kohimarama. Whoa.